Yeah, it's lovely to know that people realise how strong our kind of bond with our fans are. And and so over this time, it has been difficult. You know, it's been difficult not to celebrate the release of a record, which is a huge thing for us and our fans to kind of go through together. And, and their opinion means more to us than anyone else's opinion. So, yeah, it's not been easy. I mean, we've obviously tried to manage to get as many possibility uh, and many opportunities as we can. So we've done a load of Zoom things, we've done a load, but it's not the same, you know? So we're just holding on to that hope of like, we'll be able to announce shows soon enough. And, um, but then just trying to stay open and honest online about how we're feeling, about how our fans are feeling, and then just try and keep that connection alive. But, but it's definitely felt different, no doubt about it. Um, but maybe it'll just make it all the more sweet when we can get back together. As a band who prides ourselves on a connection with our fans, um, not having the physical connection, uh, for me, it's just uh, it's having that connection regardless. And I feel like it's very present. Uh, the love that people have shown Cannibal is overwhelming uh, and beyond words that I can express, at least. Um, and yeah, so I feel that even though we can't be there in person, that's just a constant as long as this band exists. Um, I actually think we're really lucky in the sense that every single one of our family supports us massively. They all come to shows, they all know each other through us at shows as well. I think each of us would probably say our own parents were the biggest fans, but that's only like saying, you know, <laughs> your girlfriend or wives are the biggest fans. I, I definitely think that we're really lucky in having all the families be so supportive. Whose family is the biggest BT fans? That's really hard because all of our family really support the band and have done f since day one. Um, but I'd say the most people to come to shows are probably Anne Cameron, Jace's mum, and my mum and dad and dad's mum and dad. Um, so they're probably the people that have been to most BT shows. If I was stuck on a desert island, what would my three things be? Probably the uh, some seeds for food or fruit to plant so I could eat and not die. That would be one. Um, some kind of implement to be able to filtrate water because then I wouldn't die. And then a dog just for companionship. So if I was stuck on a desert island, my three essentials would be a uh, guitar, uh, coffee, and Marmite Flavor Walker's crisps. Um, if I was stuck on a desert island, I think my three essentials would be my phone, a portable charger for said phone, and uh, some headphones. I think I could get away if there was a way of continuously charging on the desert island, I think I'd be okay with that. I don't deal very well with nature as a whole, so I think I'd probably need them at the very least. Um, but yeah. Now, I absolutely love superheroes, so if we were a superhero squad, I think my ability would definitely be telekinesis. I've always wanted to be able to uh, be that sort of superhero. Uh, I've wanted to be a superhero since I was a little kid, and that's probably why I love comics so much. If I could pick one superhero to be though, it would definitely be Spider-Man. So maybe I'd want to be a Spider-Man. Maybe I'd want telekinesis. It's a, it would be close. I wouldn't be bothered if I had either of them. <laughs> if Perry Tomorrow were a superhero squad, my personal power would be to eat as many snacks, pizza, just really shit food and never put on any weight. And then riff and rock the masses after. If Barry Tomorrow had superhero powers, what would it be? We do have superhero powers. Uh, our superhero powers are to rock and we have the ability to rock and we do rock and so we are superheroes how that's a great question about how how close did we actually get to calling it uh, before union of crowns pretty close like we were playing shows without our then guitarist and there wasn't really any shows coming in um and so we'd had conversation i mean we hadn't said you know specifically this is the last time we're going to be playing a show but like we were pretty much sure that we weren't going to be making a new album at that point so 
yeah, it was pretty dark. It got, got pretty close, but thankfully we didn't. What do I prefer? Um, I really love the stage invasion type shows. I think they are super fun and super intense and they come with a certain amount of fear, which I don't think you get from other shows. We definitely have to be on your A game, not because of anything other than knowing where everyone is. And I love that feeling. So stage invasion tours are really cool, but it is really fun being able to do that production and get in all the lights and everything together and seeing massive crowds. So for me, I like them both equally. So I'm going to cop out and say both. Loads of people ask us the question as to whether we prefer festivals or whether we prefer club shows or massive shows and stuff. So they all serve a kind of purpose in, in playing music. And I think for me, you know, club shows are where we were born. We were born playing a venue. We were born playing in front of people in a sweaty environment. So they'll always have my heart. They're always a great opportunity to see kind of where your fan base has got to. Um, Festivals are great to play to new people um, and there's just something special about a festival environment, you know, a couple of beers, sun's going down, it's often a really nice time. So I'd probably say both, which is a real big cop out. Is Jaffa cake a biscuit or a cake? That's easy. It is a cake. Um, and that is because when a biscuit gets stale, it goes soft. And when a cake gets stale, it goes hard. And a Jaffa cake gets hard. I would consider a Jaffa cake a biscuit as opposed to a cake. Jaffa cakes are definitely biscuits. Not having anyone say otherwise. <laughs>